Listen, listen, this is the last Sunday of January 2022. That sounds like a long way away, but here we are. And thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name that you have ushered us into your house of worship. One more time. Lord, it's not something because we've been so good. Not because we've said all the right things or done all the right things, Lord, but it's been by your grace. Grace, dear God, that woke us up this morning. Grace that gave us a place to live. Grace that has given us transportation. Grace that has put food on our table and love for others in our hearts. Lord, it is you. So this morning, dear Lord, it's all about you. It's always about you. We pray, oh God, that you will receive our worship this morning through song and through the word. And when we are done this morning, may you be glorified. May we be edified and sanctified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning, Sky Bridge. Good morning, Sky Bridge. Good morning. Good morning to those who are online. Thank you for being with us this morning, because truly today is the day that the Lord has made. So we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it, right? So we're going to need some hand clapping. We're going to need some, some praises to God. So uh, I know it's a little chilly outside, but it's, we're going to get warmed up in the spirit, right? So we gonna get we gonna get some hand clapping. Come on, let's get started. Come on, clap your hands. Give me some, give me some clap, hand clapping. Come on, come on, act like you at the old church. My my grandparents, they used to have to be on the floor, and you can hear the you can hear the noise on the floor. Let me hear some hand clapping.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever God is, that's what he is to you. Whether he's your joy, whether he's your peace, you fill in the blank what God is to you. Because he's truly my everything. He's my everything. He's my everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's truly my everything. He's truly my everything. You know what? My everything. 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 He deserves it all. He deserves it. So y'all give Sister Amy a hand while she sings. He deserves it.
deserves it. Our last song is Stan. I don't know what you went through this week or what you've been going through this month or what you've been going through last year, but God just wants us to stand in the midst of it all. He just wants us to stand. And sometimes it's hard to stand. You know, you, you want to sit down and he say, stand. You know, you get tired and you still say, stand. So we're going to do this song. And if it meditates to your heart, to your spirit, to your soul, you know, just, just give the Lord your, your best offering where you are. And we're going to try to sing this song. Even in the midst of crying and praying, you still have to stand. past 
tell me how do you deal with the shame and how can you smile when your heart has been broken and filled with pain so much pain tell me what do you do when you're done all you can seems like you can't make it well, you just stand. stand, you just stand, stand. you just stand. stand, don't you dare give up, you through the storm, stand. through the rain, stand. through the hurt, stand. stand through the pain, you just don't you bow. Somebody give God praise and out. Somebody give God praise.
good to see you in the house this morning. And for those of you who are streaming us live on Facebook, welcome again to the last Sunday in the month of January 2022. Listen, y'all, we're all still here by grace, <laughs> by God's grace and God's mercy. Amen. Won't you give God great praise this morning for our praise team and for our band this morning? I didn't know we were doing bow ties today. I had nobody, I didn't get the memo. Nobody told me about the bow ties. I didn't hear about it. So I may have to borrow one. I may have to borrow one. You just cool like that. Is that how? I, you just roll like that. All right, all right. I'm going to leave you alone. Well, good morning. After you die, all you can, you just stand. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Sometimes you just got to stand. When it doesn't look clear, when you feel like, Sister Johnson, when it feels like that God is not answering your prayers, when it seems like you're the only one going through, sometimes you just got to stand. Now, standing is not suggesting that you just you know, put on a smiley face and lie about it, how you really feel. Standing means you stand on the Word of God and what He has promised you, what He has shown us. We, the Bible is replete with studies and uh, rather stories of people who have gone through and they stayed with God and He brought them through. So I know we're living in some, some d difficult days and I know the times look tough. And we've always had sickness and divorce and children acting crazy and parents acting crazy. We've always had job layoffs. We've always had funny money. But on top of all of that, we have something called COVID-19. And it just added another layer of crazy. But in all of that, God is still good. <laughs> Scripture makes it plain. Even through that, he works all things for his glory and for our good. Amen. He can even take the bad days, take stuff that you and I get scared about, worried about, frightful about, and he'll use it for his glory. We celebrate God and his, all that he's doing. Let me do a few housekeeping things real quickly. One, I want to say thank you, dear Lord, and, and welcome back, Brother Al, being back in the house. I got a... Uh, a, a, a homegoing celebration of his wife, our sister, Alice Faye Webster. I did not know. I did not know her middle name was Faye. I, I got a Faye, too. I got a Faye, too. Mine is Linda Faye. Uh, but we've been praying with you and for you as you've been going back and forth from here to California and back. We've been in touch with, with, uh, with your family, with Nate, and uh, certainly with Brother Cleo and Sister Bertha. And they've been keeping us abreast of everything that's going on. So, man, I, I know it's difficult. And uh, you stand. You stand. You stand, my brother. God bless you. I want to celebrate what God is doing, not just in the building, but outside. Uh, when we did the Urban Garden on yesterday, amen? Y'all give God praise. Sister Housen, stand up here for a minute. Just stand up, Sister Housen. There she is. She's the one that plans all this stuff, y'all. She plans all of our outreach in the community. If anybody was there on yesterday, won't you just stand up and give God praise for your attendance? Look at you. Look at I see y'all. I see y'all. I see you upstairs. I see you upstairs. God bless you. We had a good time. Yeah. I know you were. I, I heard you. I, I heard you. And uh, Sister Benita, I just want to thank you for that recipe. My wife cooked it and we ate it. Y'all need to know that, that cabbage is gone. That cabbage... Y'all better ask around. Yeah, I know that's the reason I married her. Brothers, let me help you with something real quick. All you single brothers over here. Find a sister that can cook. I'm not talking about top ramen. I can boil water. You find your sister that can burn. And uh, we went out and to the... Uh, the, I didn't know they had a big garden like that. They have acres and acres and acres out there. And our team and the folks that were with us collected 3,000 pounds of groceries, of cabbage, that is being used uh, to feed uh, people in the city of San Antonio and at least 29 surrounding 
counties of people who uh, need food. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure. Listen, James says it like this in the book of James. He says, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, we're not saved by works, y'all. We're saved by faith. We say it by his amazing grace. But after we've been saved, we ought to show some sign that we've changed, that we're different. Listen, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, back in the day, we didn't get up early, Brother Willie. We didn't get up early on a Saturday to go get groceries. We, stayed, we, got, up early, we got up late at night to go party. So, y'all, we can change our ways, amen, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, listen, there's a word in the house today. If you're with us, stand with me as we read together our scripture coming from 1 Corinthians chapter number three first corinthians chapter number three let's pray lord we bless you and we thank you that you have ushered us into your house one more time thank you for the songs that have gone up the people who are here those who are streaming live and those who will be watching delayed on our other platforms lord be with us this morning as we open this text to lord now please open our eyes that we may see you clearer open our ears that we may hear you better and open our hearts now that we may be receptive and obedient to that which you give us today. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 9. It reads like this. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you're not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Paul, Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase, gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the strength. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive their wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. And God is building according to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder. I laid a foundation and someone else is building up on it. I want to talk to you this morning from the topic, don't get stuck in infancy. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't get stuck in infancy as you take your seats. <laughs> when I went into healthcare a million years ago, one of the most exciting things and most memorable things that ever happened to me is I saw a baby being born for the first time in my life as a, as a young adult uh, working at a hospital here across town. And, and the baby came in, and I'm sitting there going like, and I'm sitting there going like, you know, I, I'm one of the healthcare people, but I'm in amazement. I'm sitting there like, wow, this is amazing how God get a man and a woman who just get together and we have a baby. And then I come to find out after the baby came out, it was the child, it was the daughter, I believe, of one of my classmates from high school. And so when the baby came out, I went out to the front with the physician to see the parents. And I said, oh, when I called him by name, he said, oh, Russ. And we were just like, hey, man, your baby back here. He, she looked great. It's amazing. It's one of those exciting times in life when you see birth, new life coming to the world. It, it's just, a, it's just a, a thing that you just never forget. And then more Exciting than all of that is I got to see the birth of my own two children, Jared and Zachary. Uh, and it's exciting to see them develop from a newborn to a toddler. Because those are some crazy years right there. Those are some crazy years. And all during all that time, I'm saying stuff like, you know, I, get to, I got tired of diapers. Y'all need to know I got tired. I said, if I had to buy one more diaper, one more diaper. And then you're tired of the children's food. You can only go to restaurants that have children's food. And now they're gone. And you said they're like, Lord, you know, I'm going to tell you, young parents, young families, enjoy every stage. Enjoy every stage and don't rush the next one. Don't, don't, don't rush the next one. 
But between the birth and, and three months, your baby starts to do some crazy stuff. Like they start to smile. They start to raise their head. And they start to kind of track with their eyes. And you put your hand in front of them, they can kind of follow you now instead of getting cross-eyed. And they're going like, where's she going? And then from four months to six months, you know, the baby will probably learn to roll and, and, and get, you know, from their back to the front or from the front to the back. They start babbling. And you swear they're calling you daddy. And then, and then mama looks at Mm -mm, the first word she said was mom. Oh, no. Nah. And, and, and Linda tried to explain to me, no, that's just easier for them to enunciate. They're just really going like, dad, dad, dad. He ain't calling you daddy. I said, no, that's my boy. And he said, daddy. <laughs> End of the discussion. We ain't having no more talk about that one. Because they're developing from a little an infant to a toddler, and they're changing. Later on, they change too much. And now you hear them in the kitchen before you can go get them, and you hear pots and pans that you're not working on right now. And you hear this clashing and noise going on. But what would you think if your child continued to do that at 12? You got a problem. They're not growing. They're not maturing. They're not changing. They're still going around going like dad, dad, and clashing pots and pans. You need to go talk to your pediatrician. Well, likewise, on a spiritual level, uh, 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 you and I learn to go from smiling to raising our heads to tracking objects, spiritually speaking. Uh, 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 and we learn to mature in our spiritual faith. Listen, you should not be at the same spiritual level that you were last year, 10 years ago. You should know more about God, about the Holy Spirit, about the Son, Jesus Christ, about what he did for us about the doctrines of salvation and the doctrine of justification, the doctrines of glorification, soteriology, eschatology. You should know more about your God today than you knew last Sunday if you just listen to the sermon. We need to grow. Don't get stuck in infancy. During Paul's stay in Corinth, he couldn't address the Corinthians there as spiritually mature people, but instead he had to address them as infants. Yeah. Now, that's, a, that's, a, a, that's not a good thing to be happening to you. That's an indictment on the church. If people walk in and call you a child or an infant, they're saying, I don't see any growth in you. You're not the person they want to put in the basketball game. If you still can't dribble, can't pass, can't shoot, you're not playing. You can sit on the bench and put on the uniform, but that's all you got. You'll never get into the game. Uh, and some of us, let me be honest. Some of us, we are afraid to grow in church because we feel like everybody else around us is more mature than us. And we don't want people to know what we don't know. Let me put it, let me make it live for you. I grew up in the church, and I, I, I was drugged to church from the time I was a kid, and we were in church all Sunday. You don't hear me. Do I have a witness in the house? Anybody know what I'm talking about? All Sunday. And I'm thinking, our parents, something wrong with their par our parents. Uh, my friends are running around playing, but I'm going back to Sunday evening church. Yeah. I'm missing everything. Come to find out, Brother Charles, uh, they were missing everything. I just didn't know it at that time. But my parents were making sure that I'm maturing in the faith. But the only way you can get your children to mature, mama and daddy, is you got to have them where the maturing is going on. <laughs> this Wednesday, we're going to have children and teens down the hall while we meet in here for our Bible study. And then you're going to wake up one day and your children are going to be not four, but 14, and you, they don't know nothing about Jesus. You're not teaching them at home, and you don't bring them to Bible study because it's inconvenient. Listen, parenting is never convenient. Somebody say amen right there. Parenting is never convenient. So you got to work through the inconveniences and figure out how to get it done. I didn't know until I was much older, I was a young adult, when Mama told us, she said, I was tired. There were times I did not feel like going back to church, but I knew I needed to have y'all there. We're talking about Christian maturity, y'all. Christian maturity, Christian maturity. What are we supposed to do? We got to leave the elementary teachings behind and grow on to spiritual growth. Don't get stuck in infancy. So how did we get to this text? What's the background here? Uh, the Apostle Paul, the writer of most 
of the New Testament is talking, talking to us today. And Paul is making it clear in chapter 1 that Christians at Corinth would stand guiltless before God on the day of salvation because of their saving faith. He's not saying they're not saved. He's just saying they're immature in their salvation. He is saying that, that, that the fact that they've received the gifts, received the Holy Spirit, they're believers. But they are not only living as spiritual people, they are living as immature spiritual people, and they live more like they're in the flesh or in the world. Whenever he talks about the flesh, he's talking about we have our fleshly urges and desires that we give into. But then when we come to Christ, we are to put those things away and let Christ dominate our lives. But he's saying, y'all are believers, but y'all act more like the world that you came out of. You're not growing. By now, you shouldn't be doing that, drinking that, hanging out with them, doing those things anymore. You should be growing now, but you still act like you did when I found you. Uh, we all struggle in that area, all of us, 100%. When we came to Christ, we weren't instantly mature. It took time, Bible study, sermons, reading, prayer, change. And God has moved us from where we were to where we are today. And somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Listen, I may not be where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Do I have a witness in the house? Mm, don't get stuck on your sippy cup and your little bottle. You got to turn that thing over. It's time for you to start eating some table food. You know what table food is when you put a little of that food that you eat in a blender, blend it up, and you save it to the baby. Mama had a different way of doing baby food, table food. Mama ain't here today. Normally, she'd be sitting about right there. But mama would take some meat, and mama would chew it up, yeah. take it out of her mouth, and stick it in the baby's mouth. Yeah. And we would eat it. We'd go like, mmm, very good. <laughs> Problem is, mama took all the gravy and juice out of it before it got to me. But it was good, good bruh. We, we ate it. We ate it. We ate it. It's time to get rid of the sippy cup and eat some table food, y'all. Listen, I got three things of emphasis I want to give you this morning. There's some notepads in front of you. One side is for children. The other side is for the adults. But if you keep notes, you're going to remember most of what you write down in bullet points. And, but you're going to forget most of what I say. So take some notes. Take some notes. The first thing I want you to notice is this, verses 1 through 2. Watch what you digest. Watch what you digest, what you eat. He says, but I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk. That's what they're digesting. I fed you with milk, but you should have been eating meat by now. By now. By now. Listen, if you're in the fourth grade, you should know one, two, three. By now. It's all he's saying. You, by now. You should, you, should be, you should know more. The Apostle Paul contrasts spiritual person with a babe in Christ, a very young believer. The Corinthians seem to criticize Paul because of his style and his message. They're basically saying, you're teaching us. We don't like the way you're teaching us. You're teaching us like we don't know no better. He said, you don't. They're comparing Paul's teaching. Now, remember, this is the Apostle Paul who writes most of the New Testament. He knows Greek. He knows Hebrew. But they said, but you're not giving us the deep theological stuff. He said, because you can't handle it. If I start talking to you about it, you'll get lost because you're still on milk and not on meat. Have you been in church where you come in, you listen to the songs, you daze off during the sermon, and then you say, boy, we had church today. And when you go home, people say, well, what did y'all, what did he preach you about? Well, I don't know, but man, we sang this song. You know that song that you like? And we jumped and we smiled, sister so-and-so shouted, and, uh, and then passed the priest, and at the end he went, hey, yeah, and he good, yeah, and we all said, yeah, and it was over. We sure had church. Can't wait to go back next Sunday. What did you learn last week? I don't know. What book did he use? Uh... Which pastor priest? Uh, uh, I heard you. What did you go for? I don't know. I, I went because Linda was sitting on the front row. She was cute. Some of y'all are laughing, but that's some of the reasons some of us go to church. 
Uh, he, he says, I couldn't speak to you as if you were mature Christians because you weren't. In fact, you were babes in Christ. He calls them infants, babes. He says, because I gave you milk and not solid food. 1 Corinthians 3.14 says this, people who do not have God's spirit do not accept the things that come from his spirit. In other words, if God is talking to you today and you're not getting it, he says, you, you, you're not there yet. You're not spiritually able to get it. You need to pray, say, Lord, help me to understand some of the deeper things that pastor is going to teach. Because, see, there are some areas that the Apostle Paul teaches on called doctrine. And doctrine is drier than some of the stuff that makes you feel good. See, the stuff that makes you feel good is the stuff that we're selfish and we want to hear, like, it's your turn to get yours. You're going to get, and I, the Lord told me to tell you, you're going to get rich. The Lord told me to tell you, you're going to get that car. The Lord told me to tell you that you're going to get that man or that woman. The Lord told me to tell you, it's your turn. You're going to get the promotion. You're the head and not the tail. And everybody going home, like, oh, yeah, because it's appealing to our selfishness. See, I want stuff, and I want him, and I want her, and I want everything I want, but I don't want maturity. Maturity requires work. I just want somebody to give me stuff. And then we say, God show is good because he gave me stuff. No, sometimes God will let you have heartache and pain to grow you, to spank you. The Bible says that God disciplines those he loves. So sometimes you're going to have to go through discipline. And you won't see that as a blessing from God. You sit there going like, well, how come sister so-and-so get blessed and I don't get nothing? I, all I get is heartache because he's growing you, honey. Sister so-and-so's already been down that track. She's grown in that area already. You still learning. You weren't there when she was crying. You weren't there when she was struggling. You weren't there when she was going through. But now she's on this side. You see how hard that can be? You see how hard that can be? What I just did is snatched out of your mind and your imagination some of this crazy preaching that's going on on the radios and on streaming line on television and some television shows where they make you think that you come to church and you get everything you want. No, what you come for is everything he wants. That's why this theology doesn't work real good. See, we could pack out Skybridge Church if I start tickling your ears and telling you what you want to hear. But when I give you hard truths like Paul is trying to tell us here, Paul says, you can't handle this. It'll empty the building. It'll empty the building. Because some of you came here thinking you're coming to get. He says, you're supposed to be coming to give. And in his gates with thanksgiving and in his course with praise. Notice, you do the bringing. You enter gates with thanksgiving and with praise. We're here to glorify God. Not here to make ourselves all excited. Hard theology. See, you can't receive that unless you're more mature. The, 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 the baby's going to leave out here. Excuse me, I got it. I'm at the wrong church. Maybe if I leave now, I can make it over to such and such a church. They should be getting started in about 45 minutes. Pastor House over there preaching all that stuff. I don't want to hear that. Uh, exactly, that's the point. And you'll never grow up. And you'll keep acting a fool. And then you won't understand why your marriage is not working, why your parenting is not working, why your job is not working. You won't understand why God is allowing you to go through certain things. And you won't know how to go through them because you're not maturing. And every time it's time to mature, you want to skip out. And then you skip two or three or four or five, six, seven, half a dozen Sundays. Then you come crawling back in there when heartache hits. And you don't know how to handle it. And all those weeks that you were missing, we were growing. Ah. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, you don't miss too many meals uh, uh, with, with, with physical food at the table. Well, you shouldn't be missing the gospel message either. Listen, when we are immature Christians, we are utterly unqualified to distinguish between what's holy and unholy, what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong. And sometimes the pastor will say, this is sin. And you sit there and go like, well, no, I don't agree with that. No, see, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you that the word of God says this is sin. 
And the reason you don't want to agree with it is because you're doing it. It's hard to agree with God when he's telling you to stop doing something you want to do or to start doing something you don't want to do. It's hard unless you're growing in Christ. It's hard, I tell you. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in infancy. Toss the baby bottle away. Watch what you digest. Secondly, secondly, watch what you debate. Not only watch what you digest, what you put in your mouth, what you eat physically, but watch what you debate. Here they are arguing, they are debating in verses 3 and 4. Remember now, this is how it works. The apostle Paul comes and plants the church. He leaves Corinth after being there for some years, and he goes to Ephesus, and now he's in Ephesus where we get the book of Ephesians. But while he's in Ephesians, he gets word that the people back in Corinth all the teaching he's done, all the preaching he's done, all the people who's come to Christ, they're acting a fool. They're over there arguing. And Paul must be sitting there going like, I know I told them. I know, I know I told them. I, I kind of get a feeling because as a parent now, I, I remember when we would leave the house when the boys were old enough to stay by themselves. Sister Jackson, you're going to find out. And, and you done put one, the oldest, the oldest is going to be in charge. Tiffany, Willie, y'all need to hear me. And you're going to say, no, when I get home, I need to have the clothes clean. I need to you know, move the clothes out of the dryer, wash it to the dryer, and get the kitchen cleaned up before I get home. And you walk in, and nothing's done. And then when they hear the car drive up, everybody starts running around trying to get done in five minutes or five seconds, which, you should, which takes half an hour to get done. And you see them scurrying through the house. Mm-hmm, there they go. Look, look at that. Mm-hmm. You just dropped some, baby. You just dropped big and, and they're trying to get it out of there because while you're away, they start acting a fool. They didn't do anything you told them to do. And now they're trying to come. Paul is over here. He's listening. He says, I told them people at Corinth. I told them. And so here we are. He says this. He says, now, while you are still, fl- uh, what? he said, for you are still of the flesh. You are still acting worldly. You're not acting like a believer or a mature believer. He said, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, you are not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way. Isn't that what you're doing? For when one says, I follow Paul, and the other one, well, I follow Apollos. Aren't y'all being childish? Aren't y'all being silly? Three things noteworthy here. These people were wrong in their thinking. Wrong in their speaking and wrong in their deeds. Listen, it starts in the head. If you're wrong in your thoughts, it's going to be wrong actions coming out. Whatever you put in is what you get out. Bad thinking, bad actions. Envy refers to the state of their soul. They had inward grudges and inward dissatisfaction, not towards the world, but towards each other. In other words, this is people in the church not getting around, getting agreement with people in the church. People in the church not getting along. Imagine that. Uh, Strife and contention refers to words. If I'm contending with you, that means I'm arguing with you. I'm not in agreement with you. Well, you can be in a a disagreement with me, but you don't have to be nasty about it. Uh, 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 Disputing, attending, uh, 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 this is a way of, of proving my side is right, your side is wrong. And then finally, it led to actions, divisions within the church. You see the deed? It started with thought. It moved to division. Division. And Paul is hearing this in Ephesus about the people in Corinth. There are two other things from this passage you need to take notice of. He makes it clear that you and I understand he's talking to believers because in verse number one he says, Now brothers, in other words, fellow believers. But we also notice this, that he's talking to immature believers. It's at the text because he calls them infants in Christ. So now we know the object of his letter. I'm talking to the immature believers who act like I didn't tell them nothing, who act like I didn't leave them chores when I left to go to Ephesus. Thirdly, they played one preacher against the other preacher. Oh, that's never good. I tried doing that when I was doing my residency as a perfusionist at Texas Heart Institute. And one day I'd have a a particular instructor in the operating room, and we would be doing such and such, and they would correct me on something. And I said, well, you know, 
yesterday when I was in OR number nine, when I was with so-and-so, they would stop like, <gasps> I'm not him. I'm not her. And I said, and you said, oh, I was a crazy. I must have lost my mind. What I meant was, yes, if that's the way you want it, that's how we're going to do it in here. They're saying, Paul, you don't preach like Apollos. Uh, as, as we read the text, we come to find out Paul was the, the deep theological doctrinal guy, but he spoke softly. Apollos was a power fireman brand pastor preacher, and people loved his style. But listen, church, don't mistake in style for substance. Because you can get some preacher come up and say, Hey, won't he do it? Yeah, my God is able. Yeah, style. <laughs> Doctrine. Turn with me to the book of so-and-so. We're going to learn about soteriology, the study of how God saved us. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 through 1 through 13 tells us all about the gifts, the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to sit there and go like, uh-uh, do we have to learn that? Yeah, you need to understand how and why you were saved. And you have to walk through the steps of it. It's not sexy, it's not cool, it's not exciting, it doesn't make you want to flip over your pew, but it gives you substance that you can live with. Something that will be inside of you from now on. I'm not saying it's wrong to be exciting and preach with power and passion and, 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 and style. But make sure you feed the people some meat before you give them the gravy. Nobody wants a plate full of gravy. You want some meat first. I want some mashed potatoes, green beans, and gravy. How about some meat? How about some meat? Paul is trying to help us understand that they're arguing over foolish stuff. You, whether you're arguing with, about this pastor or this pastor, this preacher or that preacher, this church or that church, notice that God examines our behavior as an indication of our spiritual condition. As an indication of our spiritual condi condition. We must not imagine that we are maturing simply because we know more about God or more about the Bible. It doesn't matter that you know more about it if you're not doing it. That's like you go to the DPS office, you think you're ready to drive because you know about cars, you know about the engine inside the car, you know about the white lines on the street, but you ain't been on the street yet. You got to get behind the wheel sooner or later, am I right about it? You can study all you want, but wait, get out there and drive 60 miles an hour. It'll scare you to death. I remember the first time uh, I took my sons out to drive, we, we did it usually on weekends early in the morning when there's nobody on the road. And uh, they had gone from, you know, driver's education classes to on the street and the, just in the neighborhood around the corner, just going to the driveway, stop, 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 stop! <laughs> and you're done for the day. That's it. And then eventually you go to around the neighborhood, then you're around the area, and then one day we had to get on the freeway. I, I told my son to get on the freeway, and we were going. I said, now, the, we're getting ready. You're going to go onto the entrance ramp, and you're going to get up to 60 miles an hour. Well, 60 didn't mean anything to him until he got up to 40. And I said, now, come on up a little bit more. He looked at me. I said, now, come on up. You, you, you're almost up there. You're at 50. Now, come on up. to 60? I said, yeah, man, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And he got up there, and he was like, It's, it's, it's scary when you ain't been there. You ain't been there. So you can't expect somebody to drive 60 who haven't been doing 20. God is saying, I can't expect you to know the deeper things about me and all the blessings I have for you if you can't even tell me where Genesis is. You want to grow in Christ? Show up at church every Sunday. You want to grow up in Christ? Show up at Bible study every Wednesday. You want to grow in Christ? Open your Bible, even when past and around, and do some study on your own every day. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you, we're all embarrassed. None of us know all the answers. We're all still studying. Listen, I came out of seminary with more questions than I went in with. I'm still like, they said that they had me in my degree. I said, but I got questions. <laughs> I got questions. We never exhaust the Word of God. We never exhaust it. So don't stay away because you don't know, because if you don't know, you don't know. But you're not going to know staying away. Don't get stuck in infancy. Watch what you digest. 
Watch your debate, what you talk about, who you talk about. Lastly, watch the move of God. Watch the move of God. Lastly, in verses 6 through 9, he says, I planted. Now, this is God about to move here. Apollos water. This is Paul correcting their thinking. But God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. And each will receive his wages or his reward for his labor. We are, for we are God's workers. You are God's field and God's building. So here we are. He said, y'all are arguing about pastoral styles, preaching styles. He said, but it's not about Paul at all. It's not about Apollos. It's about God. Paul and Apollos are just instruments in God's hands. Paul planted the church. Apollos grew the church. Paul planted the seed, the word of God in your heart. Apollos watered the seed by preaching to you every week. But you can't be fed and you can't be watered if you're not there when the watering is being done. And you don't understand why your roots are not growing, but somebody else's is. And you're immature and you'll never grow up when you don't show up. You'll never grow up. If you're not there, you'll never grow up if you find excuses to stay away. Notice he doesn't ask who are they focusing on as far as their personality when he says Paul shifts the conversation. And he says, what is Paul? What is Apollos? He's not asking who are they. See, to ask the who suggests you want to know more about their personality. But to ask what focuses on their role and their function. Their role and function is to feed you, to digest this material before they present it to you so it makes some kind of a sense and some kind of an application may be made by the end of the day. Paul answers his own questions when he says, they are meaning we are servants through whom you believe. And the Lord assigned to each, Paul and Apollos, not to be masters to be followed, but servants to be emulated. We are all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. It just happens as my position. I get to stand behind a podium. But later on, you'll be down the hall teaching the children or working in hospitality or doing the ushering outside or working upstairs in the audio video, making sure that the message goes out around the world. Everybody, we're all servants, y'all. Paul uses an agricultural comparison, though. He talks about watering and planting and all those kind of things because he knew his audience would understand exactly what he was talking about. Through preaching in the synagogues and among the Gentiles, he says they were converted in Corinth and in the church, they were planted there. Then Paulos came along and took what I planted and he started watering it because he's good at watering. I'm just good at planting. Know your role and stay in it. Paul was simple. Apollos was eloquent, but Paul was simple. It's ultimately not about Paul. It's ultimately not about Apollos. They are servants of God, and you ought to be grateful that God sends you servants who love you enough to present the gospel to you. What is this all about? It's all about it's teaching us to grow. Don't get stuck in infancy. Paul writes that we can't stay on milk. We got to go to meat. Paul writes that it's not about the people that present to you. It's what you've learned and how you have grown. Paul writes that you and I need to be weary of continuing to work the way we've been working doing the same thing we've been doing. And if you don't see any progress in your spiritual journey with God, then it's on you because God has made sure that you've had a pastor in front of you. God has made sure that you've had singing in front of you. God has made sure you've had opportunity in front of you. Matter of fact, we were at the food bank in the urban garden, and he's provided opportunity for us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. But if you couldn't make it, then you couldn't make it. But if you made excuses and didn't come, then shame on you. That was an opportunity to grow. God gives you opportunity to grow. Now, we're going to have another opportunity for you to grow soon. Our women are going to be meeting on their Zoom meeting. Our men are going to be meeting with Tuesday, Tuesday. Our children are going to be meeting down the hall this Wednesday. Our teens are going to be meeting down the hall this Tuesday. Our adults will be in here this, this Wednesday. I'm sorry. This Wednesday on all three of those. All this Wednesday. We're going to have singing. We're going to have worship. I'm going to preach. We're going to have prayer. We're going to go home. That's another opportunity for you to get watered. 
But if you make an excuse, you say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. See, you old now. And see, we're young adults. We got children. We got jobs. We got cars. We got families. You're laughing because I had to wrestle with that. I literally ran out of the operating room in my scrubs, ran to church, and had to preach. You find a way if God is important to you. You find a way. My pastor wanted to know, how is that when you're coming back to church? I need you to preach Sunday. I said, Pastor, I'm still stuck, but I'll be there as soon as I get out. And I pray, y'all. I said, Lord, get me out of here. Then I have to pray, Sister Dondria, Lord, clear the traffic between the hospital and the church because there's another hospital I need to be at where some spiritual healing needs to go on over there. But God always, am I right about it, Linda? Every time I was on call, I always had to preach. And God always made a way for me to get there on time. Amen? There is an opportunity. You may have to exchange the kids in the Walmart parking lot. Honey, I got them this far. I'll meet you at Walmart. You take them on the music lessons. I got to go to Bible study. And sometimes it was the reverse. Linda says, listen, I got a women's meeting, and you need to pick up the kids and take the kids home and get them fed because I need to go. You just make it work. There are some things we have to turn loose of, y'all, that we, that we don't like to. Some old habits, old places, old hobbies. Sometimes your hobbies have to go away. I didn't get to pick up my hobbies again until I was grown and my children were out of the house. But your hobbies do not substitute for the children. You go, kids, the kids don't grow up and say, I love my dad because he never was home. He was always taking care of his hobbies. I love my mama because she was never there taking care of us. She made sure that her, her, her games and her sororities and her hobbies took first place. No, the kids going to hurt for the rest of their life because you weren't there. Make a difference. Make a change. Give up some stuff you want to do because you only get one chance to raise the kids. You only get one shot at it. One shot. And, you, and God only gets a shot to raise you. Stop. Make time for God because he's, he's got time for you. He's providing the water, but you got to drink. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you. We thank you for who you are and how you bless us every day. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Lord, help us to grow. Help this pastor to grow. Help our entire congregation, those who are Zooming us, wherever they may be. Help us to grow and stop making excuses. Uh, Lord, get us up off the sofas, out of the bed, out of our comfort zone. It is so hard when it's cold outside and we're snuggled in our warm area. We just want to stay there. But, Lord, you didn't stay comfortable. You left heaven and came all the way down to earth to die for our sins, to be raised on the third day. And to, now you sit at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. You weren't lazy. You weren't slothful. You were there. So be there for us and help us now to be there for those who are following us as we follow you. Now, Lord, I pray for those who are listening as they may know your Savior and Lord and accept, receive you as Savior. Only you can make that move, Lord. So we ask that you do that in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Listen, give God praise if you can. For all of those of you who are here this morning, those of you who are Zooming, make a decision. Let me ask a simple question. Do you know for sure that when you die, you're going to go to heaven? If you don't know, you need to know today. The Bible makes it real plain. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he's asking you right now in your pew. Pray right now. Just say, Lord, accept me as your child. I want to be saved. I want to know I'm going to heaven. I know I've made some mistakes. I know I've done sin. I know I've done wrong. But, Lord, I'm asking you to change me, make me new from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are some blue decision cards in your pew. Right in front of you, there's some blue cards. And those are decisions for you to make. One decision might be to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. Another one might be to, uh, uh, for, for prayer or rededication, if you give your, want to give your life afresh to the Lord. Maybe you've been out of church for a period of time and you want to come back. Or more, maybe you just want to know more about the church or about baby baptisms or about marital counseling. Just check the box, put your name and information on there, and drop it in the offering tray on your way out today so that we'll know how to follow up with you. Amen? Or maybe you just want to be on our, uh, on our uh, church uh, uh, bulletin or calendar so we can reach out to you. 
Uh, you can do that too. Fill out the card, and we'll be so glad to reach out to you today. Amen? Listen, we're getting ready to go. Um, okay. And uh, let me ask you to continue to pray for Michelle and Mike Anderson. Amen? Uh, as you know, amen. Y'all keep them in your prayers. They're going through a very difficult time as their son is, uh, uh, in the intensive care has passed. And so they're making some really, really tough, tough, tough decisions on this morning. Amen. Uh, let me say a special shout out to the Menifees who are with us this morning. Just wave your hands. <laughs> Dr. Menifee, Sister Menifee, good to see y'all in the house this morning. Th this is one of Linda's closest friends from, well, you tell them. Amen, amen. <laughs> Pam, you and I have been on this journey with them for a minute now, so uh, they, need to, they need a special class for spouses, because we had to, I didn't think I'd ever sleep again. Oh, I, yeah, I spoke to Esther this morning when she came in. Good to see you, Sister Esther. Everybody say, hey, Esther, what's up? Any more shout outs? Isaiah Sharp, yeah, he got the bow tie on. He gonna loan it to me. And Cortland's in the house, man. What's up? What's up? We missing somebody. Go Niners. You need to leave, brother. Cowboys. Let's all stand. Oh, we got announcements. I'm sorry. Give me, give me. Good morning, Skybridge. One more minute. Here are your 60 announcements seconds. for Sunday, January the 30th. Bible Studies for Life is back in person beginning this Wednesday, February the 2nd at 6.30. Classes are available for adults, youth, and children. Come on out for seeking prayer and study. Will also be broadcasting via Zoom. We are in need of a Bible Studies for Life coordinator. This person will order and distribute lessons, must have computer knowledge and coordinator skills. If you're interested, please contact the church office. New members orientation is being held on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. Please see your instructor, Brother Michael Anderson, for additional information. We have a new way of giving by using the QR code located in the foyer. It's really easy. Use the camera on your smartphone to scan our QR code. Enter the requested information and voila! You're done. Try it out today. Hey. Men, are you ready for your Tuesday tune-up? The next meeting is Tuesday, February the 8th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Contact Willie Jackson for additional information. Ladies, the next Bridge to Womanhood meeting is on Saturday, February the 5th at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Contact Amy Jackson for additional information. Bridge Kids! Bridge Kids! In-person Bible study begins this Wednesday at 6.30. Ask your parents to bring you so you don't miss out. Parents, please see Tiffany Blakely for additional information. Marriage is a lifelong adventure of growing together through every stage of life. The happiest couples commit to learning skills that help them weather difficult seasons and deal with relationship challenges. Couples attend Weekend to Remember because they're ready to invest in their marriage and intentionally move towards oneness. This getaway helps you understand God's blueprint for marriage so you can create a legacy of greatness. 
Skybridge family. Did you know there are available resources for you to use to help you on your journey with Christ? Please log on to the church website and select the links drop down for more information. You want to give? Yes. We offer four different ways. Online at skybridgechurch.org, through your smartphone, using the Skybridge app, or our QR code located in the lobby, through the mail, or right here in church on Sunday mornings. To give in church today, an usher or greeter will be standing by at the end of worship service. Skybridge Youth and Parents. Youth. Mark the date of Saturday, February the 19th on your calendars. We will be meeting at Chicken and Pickle near UTSA to enjoy outdoor games and activities. Please be sure to RSVP to youth leaders to ensure we reserve enough spots to enjoy pickleball. If you don't know what pickleball is, you'll have to come to find out. Further details on the event will be shared via email and group meet. Ask Father and Paul Jones. Hey Skybridge, let's get social. If you like what we're doing, let us know. Like us on Facebook. Leave a review on Yelp. Share us everywhere you can. Help us get the word out about Skybridge. Like us on your phone, like us on Facebook, like us on all the other. Platform. Good morning, Skybridge Youth. Bible Studies for Life is just around the corner. In our lesson series entitled, Back to the Future, we have four exciting lessons that we'll be getting into, with our first lesson being about how, before time even began as we know it, Jesus' mission was to set us free. We look forward to seeing you all in person to fellowship, play some games, and learn about Jesus' mission. Skybridge Parents, to get connected with future youth activities, please connect with Brother Justin or Sister Favette by email, text, or after service. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. In the future. He missed his role in Hollywood. Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor Russell Howlton of Skybridge Community Church celebrating and, and excited about the idea that we're starting Bible Studies for Life, a Bible study that's designed to meet our needs in real-life circumstances, not just head knowledge, but actual, practical, hands-on application. What can I do with my faith? Listen, uh, after we have become believers in Jesus Christ, we're called to do more than just sit on the pew and just know about Jesus. We're called to do something. In the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 28 leaves us with Jesus' last words or our first responsibility, and that is go and make disciples, not pew people, not people that sit on the bench during the football game, but those who get in action. The problem is the church has done a poor job of doing so, but we want to correct that now. Bible Studies for Life here at Skybridge Community Church in the sanctuary and on Zoom and with our adults, our teens, and our children, 630 on Wednesday, beginning in February. Hope to see you there. We can do this. Happy birthday. Having a birthday this week? Terry Boyd. What's up, Terry? Paul Jones Jr. Paul. Joshua Ramirez. Where's Josh? Tell him I said hello. Belinda Provost Rob. Belinda. Dontria Johnson. Dontria! Happy birthday. Let's get ready to rumble. I'm sorry, a flash, but let's stand, get ready to go. We can have fun in church. We can have fun. Listen, the last thing I want to do is come to a dry church. I've been in dry church. When I was a kid, I said, man, they don't love Jesus. They say they love Jesus, but they don't love Jesus. Can't stand it. Let's pray together. Father, we bless you. We thank you for our guests today. We thank you for the worship, the songs today. Thank you for our praise team, our team, our band, our audio, our ushers, our hospitality who are waiting for us out in the, in the foyer. 
Thank you for all the work that you do, dear Lord, to keep us growing and maturing in our faith. Help us now to make ourselves available to that which you have put uh, in our hearts and in our hands, in our hands and our heads. As we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence to you, O oh God, who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your glorious presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Fist bump somebody. Fist bump. Tell them, tell them grow.